Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, I'm going to go over how I package a book set, a real heavy set of books for shipping via media mail for an, an eBay book sale. So, um, hey, I appreciate the views. I look forward to your comments. Everybody has different techniques that they use. This is just how I do it. Um, and uh, as always, subscribe. Um, we'll keep doing this, see what happens. So, um, before we jump in, I'll show you, show you exactly how I do it. I'm doing this because I've get I've gotten several questions about, you know, I have a, a video out there on on how I ship with boxes and on for media mail, but people are saying, well, what do you do, you know, for you know large sets of books, or you have lots of books, and then you have um, the really heavy, you know, what's the best way to do it? And you know, everybody has their own particular way to do it. You know, sometimes people use more specialty materials, um, but ultimately. For me, it's a matter of protection. You want you have sold the product, and now you want to ship it and it arrive in good shape. And when it's heavy, it can shift around, it can break the box, and those are the things that you have to, to guard against, is something shifting, breaking, and, and damaging itself in transit. So we'll show you some, um, I'll show you how I do it, and um, we'll, you know why media mail is such a great value for heavy stuff. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. This is a great example uh, to video because I needed to ship these anyway. I had uh, just sold a set of 23 of these Time Life books and they're really heavy. I've got my scale here so you could just kind of see why Media Mail is so, it's such a blessing for this kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's half of them and that's almost 19 pounds. So um, the, other, the other half of the books I've already got shipped um, or boxed ready for shipment. So I thought I would show you these. So you know, the total of these things are gonna be like 40 pounds. So when it's that heavy, I even though the post office will take something that's like 70 pounds, I can't imagine how it would it would arrive. I mean, because if it gets dropped, your box integrity, if it's real heavy, you need to use a, a thicker ECT box. So um, we're talking about this is gonna be a 19 pound package. All right, so for something like this, what I like to use, um, this is a, um, a 12 you can see it's a it's a 12 by 10 by 8 box it's a heavier cardboard box it's like a, a what they would call a 32 ect and it's the edge crush test it's how thick that is you know so 32 is a pretty standard some boxes are a 23 pound ect for heavy books like this i would not use a 23 pound box because it'll just it'll just break so when I'm shipping, the first thing I do, and really all you need is a box so it'll fit the stuff. You just take, um, you know, I guess go ahead and get some of my eBay tape here. Um, always just start off doing that. And then tape the bottom securely. I'm sure that tape sounds loud and bad on the video but. okay so then for me what i like to do is you know if i use like a um you can use tissue paper um you know if you have craft paper whatever whatever you've got handy um, but i'll take a couple of pages of tissue paper and i'll take a couple of the books Sometimes I might just do one, it just depends. But I'll, I'll wrap the books like that, then put them in. So, you know, just keep, just keep doing that. This provides individual protection. This is gonna make sure that the individual books do not rub, because they're heavy and there's a lot of them in there. It'll keep the individual books from rubbing against each other, um, especially for a book like this that has a printed cover and not a dust jacket. The uh, you know it'll it just it just avoids that damage, and that's that's really the, the big things you have to worry about on something heavy. You know, like I've said on the introduction, is it's shifting around on itself and it damaging itself, or the worst would be splitting the box and then you also have to guard against the box um, if they drop it at the post office okay 
and I'll show you what I do for that. All right, one more. The other thing I always do when I'm doing book sets is I double, I double and triple count to make sure. I did that one time. I I left a uh, a book out of the set by accident. Then I had to ship it separate. So get you on shipping. All right. So that's the first step. The next step is to put paper uh, in between here and on the corners and make it tight enough that it doesn't shift around. All right. You can use your tissue paper, but if I have newsprint or some craft paper, something that's heavier, I like that because it just offers more, um, you know, it doesn't give as much as the tissue paper. But what you'll see is I'll push it in, in like that. And, and this is just continuing to guard against the sets moving around. You can kind of push the side of the box out a little bit, push it down in there, get it all tight, nice. Okay. You can see. See like that? Don't want to push pop the seams. But you're just guarding against this, these these things sliding around in the box. If you've got a really deep box, you can actually do this as you as you go. And you know, as, as you're stuffing in there, you want to make sure that you're not going to damage the corners or something. These are these time life books. I don't have to really worry about that. But if I had a, dust, a bunch of dust jackets, I'd have to be a little more careful. All right. So now finish putting paper on top. A little protection there. And then that feels kind of a little cushy to me. So what I like, you know, if it feels like that again, I'll just take a couple more sheets of packing material and just kind of put on the top there, keep it from pushing around. All right. So now here's what, what I do is when I'm pushing, I hold this and I push this in so that it's really, you know, tight on the book. Okay, just keep it's good, good and tight. Type this uh, type. Tape the seam good. Again, this is a 20 pound box. Then the final thing that I'll do on taping is something like this, like to guard against the post office dropping it and splitting the corners. I tape the corners. You know, it's a lot of tape, I know, but you know, this was a $130 book set. Last thing I wanted to do is damage it. Now, that little bit of tape will just give you some box integrity. It's really what you're trying to do is prevent any, any of the corner, a corner split. And that little bit can help. Is it going to prevent it? Is it 100%? No. But you're, just, you're just doing the smart things, right? All right. So then, oh, this fell. Then what I'll do, I've got a space here for my label. I'll put, you know, my address label there. But I print out these, this big caution, heavy, please do not drop uh, stickers. You can... You can just take a sharpie and write on it if you want to, but I like to have the the nice red. Give that postal worker. He knows that it's heavy when he picks it up, so he doesn't hurt himself or drop my shipment. So then I'll get my my shipping label. I'll print it out and put it there, and that's how I do it. All right, for this this is good for book sets and especially big heavy book sets. So that's it. So see, this is why we like media mail. If you look, the, the US rates as of November, they start for a one pound box anywhere in the United States for $3.19. And then for every pound over that, it just adds 63 cents right now, okay? So a 20 pound box or a 19 pound box is gonna cost me, you know, 14 to $15 to ship. You know, a flat rate priority box 
you know, smaller than, you know, some of the boxes you would use for a book set. And a large flat rate box can cost you like 20 or 21 bucks. So it's really good value. But this is, you know, this is why Media Mail just really saves our bacon on these big heavy sets. So if it's, if it's one pound, 1.0 or less, it's 319. If it's between 1.0, zero zero one just anywhere thing over anything over one and two it's 382 anywhere in the united states so that's uh it's like the best deal around okay so that's it uh for for booksellers that have been out there a long time you know that that you you've got that that's old hat but for new new people people that are new to the the game and just you know i've been getting the questions so that's how i do it i'm sure that a lot of people you know they have other techniques other supplies but you don't need a lot. Just get a box that's the right size. And, and that's a big thing too when you're selling a book set is make sure that you you know, plan ahead and get the right box. Don't get caught you know, without it. But those um, those 12 by eight, you know, length and width boxes work great. Um, so that's how I do it. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, you know, how to box a, a, a heavy, large book set and um, you know, some insight on the media mail rates and that's it. So uh, thanks again for the view, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.